Hello. Hey. Thanks for joining us. I am Lucas Martin, and I am the voice of Arthur Winnipeg and his contact. And I'm Morgan Lane. I write Crash of the Mellifera, and I am the voice of Worker B. Um, thank you so much for listening to season one. We really appreciate it. And also thank you for joining us in this bonus content. Woo! Um, that was for bonus content. Yay. Um, during our mid-season break, we're going to be working on releasing some bonus material like this Q&A, uh, the Q&A between myself and Morgan, and some bonus episodes like the Happy Pride TM uh, short. Um, one of the things that we are hoping to release will rely on your input, which is a character Q&A. Uh, there is a Google form in the episode description that links to uh, what you are able to submit. And if you want to fill that out, that would be wonderful. Uh, we'll leave it open for submissions until August 10th. So at least at the, the release of this episode uh you'll have around 10 days to submit something it's very quick and yeah we will just write responses to the questions that you submit to the characters we're hoping uh during this break and this bonus content stuff we are working away when morgan is working away (laughs) at season two and we're hoping to start releasing episodes for season two in january 2024 yep so uh without further ado let's get on with the commentary episode here we go, episode one. Good morning, valued customers of Apis Industries. So this is like the first time, really, that you've ever used uh, o- Overcast. Uh, it's Audacity. Audacity. <laughs> wow. What is over? Anyway, Overcast is weather. Um, was that, did you find it hard to use? No, it was actually pretty intuitive. Like, I know it's not everyone's go-to. A lot of the people um, that I talk to that also make audio dramas prefer, like, Reaper and stuff. Uh, But I don't know. I found it... I always find that if I start using one type of program, I would rather just continue building on that than go, I don't like this. I'm going to try for something else unless it's just like absolutely important. And it's also free. So (laughs) free's good. Yeah. It's kind of, I think changing uh, programs really really quickly might also kind of feed into the, I don't immediately get this and I'm not immediately good at this. I quit. So good on you for sticking out with it. Yeah, I am so so smart in that way wow. whenever i remember to be smart in that way <laughs> you are such a nerd i am a nerd i can't help it specifically unlocked in case of emergent situations i also like worker b's voice so she's thank she's you fine. you do very well that's with her. right thank you so much uh i it's like i have a very good like solid idea in my head of this is someone who genuinely believes in what they're doing but isn't necessarily uh a, like naturally adept at the like the peppy like you know oh look i love everyone and i'm charismatic and stuff so everything is very a little bit over the top and very like she's kind of putting on a show for people at every given moment so your ai is masking yeah (laughs) oh just a little bit yeah but you'll find that i do qualify as a co-pilot it's the captain oh my goodness it's who is that dapper gentleman his voice sounds so cool it is you so i think uh-huh. I think Winnipeg was made back in, in originally situation. made back in, what, 2008, 2009? Yeah, it sounds about right. Yeah. Did, like, fun. literally, like, we were, like, okay, so oh, this yes. is whatever, but uh, I made it up for, like, an RP that I was doing with someone, like, and nothing from that came through to this, but uh, they literally... Like somebody just literally out of the blue was like, "Hey, do you want to like join this with us? I need some. I need a villain to be chasing my dude." And I was like, "Okay, fine." And I made up Winnipeg, and again, doesn't have a lot to do with that original um, incarnation. But like, I just like the character was so nice. He couldn't just stay a bad guy. He, you know, not. I mean. Yeah, or did he? Yeah, I can't give away too much about what he may or may have not done in the past. That's classified. (laughs) Uh, I also remember when we met back in like 2012, 2013. Yeah. And I started, 
seeing Winnipeg more and more myself, uh, I told Morgan, hey, he kind of gives me trans guy vibes. Like, I'm not going to, I'm not going to, like, force you to do anything, but this is just my little headcanon about this character. Uh, he just, he just kind of comes off as a trans dude to me, uh, which as coming out as a trans person, uh, he was kind of, he was kind of like this, this dashing rogue that I was like, okay, that's something that, you know, like I can aspire to as like my, my trans ideal self type thing. Uh, someone who's a a little, a little goofy, a little stupid. I know. Um, uh, but all in all pretty, pretty laid back. Um, and then years later, Morgan says to me, so I can't get that out of my head, what you said years ago. So I think Winnipeg's going to be trans now. I'm like, yes. True story. Exactly how it happened. Lucas just like transed up my character and um, wouldn't have it any other way. It was pretty great, honestly. Yeah. For our trajectories to be exactly right because we are actually in proximity to a planet. Actually, <laughs> has control, we are hurtling through I like the icy I like the little space, little bits of uh, foreshadowing. It's very fun. Like, I gotta be honest. One of my favorite things about writing is that you kind of feel like a mastermind putting together like this evil plot because it's like, ooh, this person's going to say something about, a, you know, a ship crashing. Guess what's going to happen seven episodes later? It's it's Chekhov's autopilot. Chekhov's autopilot. <laughs> <laughs> it's good stuff. It's good stuff. Collisions with debris. Spaghettification. Temperatures nearing absolute zero. Collisions with superheated plasma. And fighting with fellow passengers for slowly dwindling resources as the ship travels further and further away from all life sustaining systems. Yay! <laughs> that's that's <laughs> when you put that clip in there. Yeah. Yay! I like I like the tone that you have with Worker B. Uh huh. Um, where you've got this, these these heavy topics that she's talking about, but it's it's like delivered with a peppy smile and attitude. Uh, yeah. And I I like the the juxtaposition between that personally. Yeah, I mean, again, it kind of comes back to the fact that a lot of her like peppiness and you know just uh, trying it her hardest to be charismatic. It's an act. So it doesn't matter if what she's talking about, she doesn't believe that it's like a wonderful thing. She can just bulldoze right through and keep that peppiness up because it's like it's completely divorced from her actual experience of what's happening. All right, everyone. It's this is your captain speaking. <laughs> Get off my pause. back, mom. <laughs> <laughs> I love that long pause. Or it's just like, uh -huh. are you serious? Listen, Winnipeg's not here to be professional. He's here to eat hazelnuts and take a nap. And take spacewalks, honestly. Yeah, that's... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you get him. You get him. I get him. So good. So how much time do you spend finding these... Uh, the clips? The clips and stuff, sorry. The dog literally just put his head into the blanket oh and started my goodness. nosing me. Yeah. We don't have uh we don't really have a very dedicated studio folks. We are recording out of what I call my spider room. We'll probably won't go into that right I'm now. I'm so sorry if you hear his disgusting yeah. mouth noises. Yeah, he like if we close the door he would whine and stuff and so bark. he's yeah. He's a very sweet boy. He's just very high maintenance sometimes. Yeah. And that's fine. He wants to be around everyone. Yeah. But yeah, um sound effects and all that's one of the longest uh, that's one of the parts that takes the longest for editing is finding good noises. Granted, whenever it's something simple like, oh, I need a laugh track, like that's a very simple thing to look for. But when it's something vaguer like, well, somebody's going to be like, for in for instance, like, you know, if they're just, if they're running down a hall, you want, but you have a very good idea of what the floor is, but like, you know, it's like, well, I want it to sound like sheet metal, but the sheet metal they have, like either the pacing is off or something, you might have to adjust just the the pauses between the footsteps or whatever it's it's kind of it very much depends on what i'm looking for and what i'm trying to soundscape like um but i tr 
try not to be too picky because I realize that nothing's going to sound absolutely perfect. And sometimes you can get away with just layering a few sounds on top of each other and it like sounds okay. I think yes. as someone who does more visual art than anything yeah. else, um, I think that part of that might come into you are not draw like when you draw like a hand or something, yeah. it's not. It's technically not a hand. It is a symbol of a hand, no matter this how cartoonish. This is not a pipe, right? <laughs> yeah, no matter how cartoonish or how realistic it looks. So, so long as you are getting across the symbol or the imagery of the footsteps yeah. or the the bees' announcements, um, and or Winnipeg talking through a radio. As long as you like get across like the symbolism of that clearly enough. Even if it's not perfectly what you would expect, what you would yeah, expect, yeah, yeah. Um, it still works. So. Yeah, because like people aren't going to sit, well, most people aren't going to sit and like meticulously go through something and be like, that doesn't sound exactly how I would imagine a spaceship crashing would sound. Uh, what most people are going to do is, oh, that noise happened. And because of context clues, I know that this is what just happened. And, you know, that process goes through just like that so fast mm-hmm. through their head. If they have to stop and think about it, then that usually means that you could do a little bit better. <laughs> but um, everyone's I, always I, improving anyway. Yeah. So I, I feel I honestly feel like I haven't done a bad job. Like this is my first time ever editing something, and uh, I mean, you know, I could always improve. But I, I'm I'm moderately I'm pretty happy with what I've turned out so far. So yeah, I'm it, happy with it too. And I mean, everyone's got points of improvement that they can make. So every time, I I think. Oh, there's my aunt. Yeah. My aunt did this part and literally it, recorded through her cell phone onto the mic. <laughs> it was really fun. She was, uh, she's an older lady. So she was really, really excited to at least like have a small part in this. Um, so I'm, I'm glad that we, I was able to, to include her. Have we sent her like the, have we sent her like a file of this? I doubt that she has. No, I, like, I don't think so. But I don't think audio dramas are, are up her alley. Oh, that's fine. I just wondered if she'd be interested in like the scene where her voice was or something. Apropos of nothing. Well, prepare to be shocked because one of those voices wasn't organic at all. No. What? just heard a normal person conversing with the household assistant that's taken the galaxy by storm. Guaranteed to change your life. Holy the cow. Daisy, Whoa, a daisy. A daisy. Like a flower. <gasps> I'm so clever <laughs> with the naming conventions I use in this. <laughs> Not to toot my own horn or anything. <laughs> that was a horrible noise, and I apologize to my audience for having to hear it. Oh, that's the dog again. You might have heard him whining there. I really like the ads that you do for this. Oh, thanks. Yeah, they, like they're a huge part of like the humor and they allow for a lot of freedom, honestly, because, you know, everything else really has to flow into itself. And with those, I have like a, oh, she is going to do an ad here. It's just a little bubble of self-contained joke. And, you know, I usually use it to tie into something else at some point in the story but um you know it's it's something where i can just have a little bit of fun think of something completely unrelated that apis would be producing in this universe and be like ha today we're selling guns folks or everyone loves a gun yeah usa 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 space usa yeah (laughs) yeah yeah business or pleasure or pleasure worker V, you don't say. Oh, please, let's not. Oh, God, no. <laughs> we won't go down that rabbit hole. Yeah. We'll leave that to the fanfics. Wow. Yeah. Hey, I'm just saying, if people write their fanfics, like, yeah. I like I liked your harmonizing there. Oh, thanks. I, I, that's It's funny. I, if I did this again, uh, I probably wouldn't have done it that way, but I'm glad I did. Because, um, like, I literally was just worried that the effect that I already have for her voice, which is essentially I just have the whole track playing again underneath her, but a little bit lower. Oh. Um, I but, thought you actually like sang both of them. Oh no, on this one I did. Oh. But like but like that's the effect I use for everything else. Mm-hmm. Um and I was worried that having it be like, I don't know, two I don't think it's octaves, like two semitones, I think is what it is. Mm-hmm lower like i was worried it was going to um i don't know cause like some really bad like 
I don't know, resonance yeah, issues or just, like, it, it would just clash with itself, basically. But later, it, I, like, you know, B sings again in a later part, and I just was like, well, screw it. Let's just try it this way. And there were absolutely no problems. So I was like, oh, I never needed to do that. But yeah. it, it still sounds nice. So, yeah. Yeah. Good. I like how Worker B is like, please the customer, and Winnipeg's like, I'm not making any promises. Yeah. Winnipeg I has is me. Yeah, he's I'm very practical. He's very practical, and he's probably yeah, also worked incorrect. customer service. Yeah, because I worked. Be I think I've worked customer service. Twelve-ish, thirteen years. Not uh, a fun thing. I mean, it's fine. I, the first six years were in food service, so that wasn't great. And the other six were with the government and I moved away from the front facing to documents but it was still very customer service oriented and whenever you you don't make promises in customer service unless you have already fulfilled it because that's the smart thing to do because as soon as you like not don't deliver then you're in trouble so when Winnipeg is smart it's being like I'm not promising anything especially to these these passengers yeah I could see like whenever he was younger maybe before he uh, before he started working at the docks I could see him doing that maybe like working at a bar or something children it's worker B your pal from the Apis industries commercials. I'm so excited. I'm your pal from the commercials. I love it when you buy now, my for stuff. Our first kids corner segment ever. <laughs> you might enjoy a quick round of so she's been in commercials before. Uh, with her, that's the whole reason why she has a, a humanoid chassis, as she calls it. Oh, like, yeah. I don't know if I'm using the word chassis right, but I'm not going to worry about it because I think most people are just like, mm, yes, that's a word that people use when they describe mechanical engineering. Um, I mean, that's what I think whenever I hear it. But uh, that was the whole reason why she had that, uh, like, kind of body built, was so that she could represent Apis Industries in a more physical way when she was trying to, you know, help with commercials and things. Like, oh, or here's an event. Look, I'm basically the mascot of Apis Industries. Worker or be? And, uh, yeah, that'll be fun. A fun little reveal later on when we actually use that, but... It is currently unscheduled you know. because the captain has ignored my 23 queries as to which time would work best for him. But rest assured, it will He's happen if I have anything queries. to say about it. He just left you on. He, so he soft blocked you, worker B. Sorry. Yeah. Left her on red. I can't see you on the ship. Where are you? Are you hiding? Believe it or not, this question requires a somewhat complicated answer. Now, as I'm talking to you lovely children, I do not have a body. Or, if you would prefer, you could say that I have a very large body. That is I'm Worker B. Ship. I'm trying to talk to children, but I, I don't know how to talk to children. I'm going to use these big words and drive. pitch my voice up a little bit more. And maybe the children will understand me then. This is yep. Like, like some, some youth. Ooh, thunder. thunder. You might hear the dog back there. He does not like thunder. But what were you saying, Lucas? Just some, some child directed dog whistling <laughs> basically with the apis brand wow wow yeah. she's so convincing she's very convincing and the children love her for that oh definitely appearances when any sort of face might appeal to our consumers like in the commercials you've seen me in i hope that helped next question what does artificial intelligence program mean well Simply means I'm not <laughs> this child knows what artificial intelligence means. Machines are fundamentally yeah. different from organic beings. I, I can just picture the, the child the saying to the mother, Mom, what's the the and the, 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 the mom's like, I'll type it in for you, sweetheart, don't worry. It's like it's not like I can answer it. What should we name the man with the bottles? I am confused. Which man with the bottles are you referring to? But worker B, if you're an artificial organic intelligence, species, how can you feel confusion? An organic name Check and mate. It's like take I'm that atheist. Take that take that apis industries. <laughs> you do not need to assign it a name. It is a machine, like I am. We have our designations and require no further trappings of personhood. It does not have feelings. Such differences between computers and what do you people, think, you stupid little child? <laughs> Gosh, child, the... Stop the oh, that's... Speaker, 
That is not my face, and I cannot appreciate I love the, the so disgusting noises attention. you make for this part. Child, yeah, thank you. Oh, forgot my other very important role in this is I did voice a horrible noise what child who's probably an alien number one. I guess he'd be number one because he's the only one that we have. But it was very fun to record those. Worker B is currently unavailable. Worker B got vomited on. Yeah. <laughs> so if Worker B's body is the entire ship, mm -hmm. like everything, yeah. Does she like? Does she feel it when you like touch the walls of the ship? Well, she'd only feel like if there were actual sensors put in for her to be able to take in information like that. And I don't think there are because she's literally just been popped in. She's like a, she's an extractable drive. Okay, but counterpoint. Yeah. This is, uh, Apis is this giant big company that is trying to like gather your all of your data. Yes. So like, why wouldn't they have sensors everywhere? Therefore, well, well then, did she feel problem? that child disgorge? Child onto You're just trying her. to be gross. You're just trying to be. No, gross. I'm so trying to be gross. Yeah, I don't think she felt it um, because it's, they like they didn't even have an AI in there beforehand. So mm -hmm. they, oh, okay, I get ya. Yeah. I have so like you, you like they, they had a, read, you seriously need to read the Murderbot series. I do because it has all this really good commentary on um, surveillance. Oh, and, very good. Like, corporate Are you sure? control that and stuff silly. like there's literally a place on it called corporate sure? rim yeah okay so, that that really does sound really right up my alley uh, but there's one thing there's that murder bot keeps mentioning and it's the fact that like when it the was a that's not the point uh -huh. ooh, winnipeg got angry <laughs> you voiced him don't you remember him getting angry well the view to assume i remember anything he doesn't want to get replaced by a newer model and he said that he noticed named units often get to stick around longer than unnamed ones. Well, everyone wants lots of things, Captain. That does not make their requests any less silly. Old models are supposed to be replaced at a certain point. That's, that's called planned obsolescence, Captain. Obsolescence, you mean? Shut up. <laughs> that's what say. I will These say words how I think points. words should be said, not because I think point? I'm correct. The point I know you do I this a daisy has a clear disclaimer on it that they're not sentient they're supposed to just be big, fancy dolls that can move around that's and not move sentient not people yeah. that's because they aren't people captain Winnipeg well that's one hell of a simulation yes it is our engineers have done a wonderful job of simulating organic behavior in machines but the company has not delved into creating sentience for legal reasons Currently, Apis Industries lacks the capability. They, B, Apis Industries made you though. Yes. Aren't, aren't you sentient? Me? Ha <laughs> ha. I think. I love I doing that obnoxious I laugh. I, I love, love doing it, it so much. Apis would have told me. Just like ha <laughs> ha every it's time. Her, it's her signature laugh, oh. and everybody loves Can it. I'm sure everyone does, including Winnipeg. Winnipeg is keeping Forget his thoughts it. to himself. <laughs> of course he is. But they haven't scrapped those bots we took off the ship yet. I just need to make sure they don't. Winnipeg's got ideas, and none of them are going to work Winnipeg. out. Poor baby. He's he's not head engineer for a reason. Uh, that being that he doesn't have an engineering degree. He doesn't know what he's going to do with those robots, but he's going to try to do something. <laughs> what are you even talking about? He's like, if they didn't scrap those robots, it's like, I'm going to try something with them. No, he said, I'm going to, I just need to make sure they don't. Yeah, he's going to try something with them. I'm, I'm scared to I'm even sure ask. <laughs> notice our respective parties' inability to communicate with each other. Oopsie Captain doodle. <laughs> engineers working to fix the issue as I speak. Though once you receive I love her. Message, I love her switch. Yeah, I love the her. Too formal. I'm starting I over. Yeah, the the way that she just the goes ship. from. Given that this is my first voyage, here I am. I would prefer not to here I am, and then ugh, here Let's I am. See. Yeah. Like, I, I felt like one of the things that these last, um, the logs that she does really, what it hammers down is what she does that's an act and what she does that's, like, genuine. 
because the second one she's you know the reason why she deletes those is because she's being genuine in those that's how she's actually thinking and processing things which i think most people anyone to know it's a secret that i'm thinking she and he will be less secret to her probably Otherwise, even from herself. I have much to report. I'm not I sentient. What are you talking about? And they I'm seem not sentient. I don't think things. Like, well, I just fulfill programs and sell products. <laughs> and I wear this Until robot suit sometimes. Transmission. I sell products and get in fights, just like Manco. Dear Mr. Aethys, <laughs> I love TF2. I mean, when you told me I was to direct a cruise on board the LTS Mellifera, I doubted that I, an intelligence constructed to run manufacturing facilities, would be flexible enough to entertain those fickle but infinitely valuable creatures, the consumers. Nevertheless, you allowed me this opportunity. <laughs> Her descriptions so of him just crack me up. But I am not completely fickle but infinitely so valuable. Infinitely valuable for their what? <laughs> Give me them credits. Make it rain credits up in here. Troubling. Wow. So what doesn't this cruise ship have, have Morgan? Out of the ship shut down I mean, <sighs> but to have a lot of it's kind of a thing where I would have to sit and think about it because it hasn't been narratively line. important. Um, it, it's definitely got like it's got a cinema obviously it it's got pools it's got all the stuff I described earlier in this. and the tennis courts and the yes. recreation does it have I mean, probably a garden. I mean, why would there be Nothing a garden? Probably not. Wow. Okay. So it is. I, read his I mean, le let's let's be real. I think that a garden would make it way too not dystopian. So. Oh, that's fair. Yeah. yeah. You have Gardens to value, are nice. You have to value the brutalism. Yeah. In well, it's not brutalism. I was thinking of this way more like Art Deco style. You know? Okay, you have to value the Art Deco style of it. Yeah. Brutalism's more of a well. I can't talk about her yet. Aboard the Mellifera two months and twenty days ago. Now I am on his vessel, and Captain Winnipeg has actively avoided talking with me on multiple occasions. That's because you're annoying. <laughs> Perhaps he thinks I'm going to interfere. Why would anyone think Worker B is annoying, Lucas? That brings me to point three. Listen, we're almost done with this commentary episode. There's not enough time to <laughs> list everything out. That I don't understand <laughs> it. I've only ever interfaced with consumers as a tailored personality reciting a script. And now, I have done better than might be expected on this first day. But I am left with suspicions as to your true purpose for sending me out into the world on a cruise ship. It's because you're annoying, Potential worker bee. <laughs> oh, as I watch the man, camera, I just got to get her out of the office for a while. Of the security cameras. Sorry, Sean, that was not a good uh, approximation of your voice. As looking for something. <laughs> She's like, Nancy, as he brings up questions of what sentience, position is open for this AI? For I can't quarter, get her grating voice out of news. my head. <laughs> Perhaps I know why you sent me here after all. Nancy shut down the communications from the LTS Mellifera to us. I don't want to hear her voice anymore. We got to do it. Oh, my gosh. I can't. Crash of the Mellifera is a podcast written and edited by Morgan Lane. This episode featured Morgan Lane as the voice of Worker B and Lucas Martin as the voice of Captain Winnipeg. With additional Yay. voices provided by Lucas we Martin did so good. and Darlene. All right. So this is Our the end of the first commentary Pitch. episode. We Credits hope you guys enjoyed us just kind of shooting the, shooting the breeze. Yeah. So uh, thank you so much again for listening. And we will catch you uh, next episode release. You can't see it, but I am giving all of you finger guns. Bye. Bye. Thanks for listening.